It's time to take a ride on the Steelers Afternoon Drive with our co-hosts, Alan Saunders and Zachary Smith. Welcome back to another episode of Steelers Afternoon Drive. I'm Zachary Smith. That is Alan Saunders. Alan, how are we feeling? Good to have Brandon's voice back. It's just, I mean, I love doing the show with DB. It's just there's a mm-hmm. comfort there. When I hear the music and then Brandon, go, I, ah, it's good. It's good. How are you? Yeah, I enjoyed that. Uh, everything sucks. I enjoyed that aspect of the intro and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, you know, I've gotten pretty good, Alan. I feel like it separating emotions from my sports teams over the last few years. But every once in a while, there's like a, a type of loss that still does a number on me the next day. Like I don't sleep very well, especially because it's a late game. Like the Cowboys game was very similar because like I just lay there thinking about it. Like I'm on my phone. I'm scrolling. I'm like doom scrolling. I'm looking at everybody's takes. I'm just like firing off tweets of my own. And that's kind of what was happening last night. So I didn't sleep well. Very little sleep. Had to wake up and work this morning. Jump right on here. Haven't watched the lick of the game back. Don't have a desire to. Only watched it live. Didn't get the results. And uh, yeah, so today's kind of sucked, but I'm here. All right. Well, <laughs> you have, I've given my thoughts on the game several times now yeah. since the the game. I want, I want to mm-hmm. hear some of your takes specifically. Uh, let's, let's start with just in general. This was a game that I think actually, yeah, let's start here. This was a game that, I asked DB this question yesterday before the game. Do you think this was a bad loss for the Steelers? I asked him, obviously, would it be? And and, and we both were kind of on the fence about that. Um, Not necessarily like the result, right? Like I, because I, I felt like this was certainly in the realm of possibility. You were actually the one that picked Cleveland to win this game. And honestly, like my dad brought it up to me at dinner and he was like, I'm worried about this game. Nobody's picking them to lose. And I was like, well, there's one person that picked them to lose. Uh, but, um, throwing I, me under the bus to your old man, just like, you got ass, <laughs> this jerk I do a podcast with picked him to lose. What are you talking about? Yeah. Here's the thing, like for me, that it, it it's a growing level of concern with the offense in short yardage and red zone more than it is the results. So not necessarily just them dropping this game uh, on a short week to a division rival where historically they've struggled there uh, and stuff like that. So the L itself, no. How we got to it, yes. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I I kind of agree with that. I think the the sort of lack of resolution of some of the previously lingering problems in addition to the loss are more mm-hmm. concerning for me than the, the L. And there are certain things about this loss, and I mentioned this this morning also, that are just sort of not concerning to me at all. Like, okay, I don't know, like a half a dozen like dumb penalties. Was like, hey, yeah. that's just Thursday. That's just Thursday, man. Like that. That that's what happens. Like a, I, I don't... Cam Hayward penalty on a field right, goal. Yeah, thing. exactly. exactly. <laughs> Cam Hayward with a procedure penalty is like everything you need to know about. Like, hey, this is just the dumb stuff that happens on Thursdays, and you should not worry about this going forward. The offensive line struggling. I think, like, yeah, you know, like they're just they're young guys. This is probably for a lot of them. This is like one of their first times doing this. Um, yeah. Well, that's I, what it says. I felt like Zach Frazier had his first. And, and like, the, and the one guy, and, and then the one guy who has done this, and the, the, you know, the two guys that have done this, I had to deal with Miles Garrett all night. So, like, mm-hmm. you know, like, I, don't, I don't think any amount of preparation helps there. So, yeah, like, I, I, I don't know. Those things don't bother me. Um, and there are other things that happen in this game that, like, like, I don't know. Like, did, like, should the Steelers defense have been able to get a stop there late? I don't know. Maybe, but like, they're still the one of the best defenses in the league. Like, you know, I, I just sometimes the best defense in the league gives up 24 points and can't get off the field at the end of the game and gets beat. Like that, like that doesn't, that doesn't, uh, I saw some people complain about the defense. I'm just like, 24 points. That's like a, it's like a regular day for most teams. Like, I, I don't know. I don't like, have... just to kind of, couple everything that we're talking about with like how weird it is only give up one third down conversion but they were one four third four, down, four, four for four i literally oh went around the locker room last night and i was like can you explain four for four on fourth down and veteran guys and they're like no it just 
is a thing that you know and and like these guys aren't going to say this after they lose well i guess george pickens has proved that there are some <laughs> people that will say anything after they lose yeah. but like if you played this game a hundred times and the Browns went for it on fourth down a hundred four hundred times, how many do you think they're going to convert against the Steelers' defense? Less than half for sure, yeah. maybe less than a quarter, right? Like th this just mm -hmm. happened to be the game they converted all four, and you know I think that's the thing about Thursday night football. I think that's the thing about bad weather is that it just it just keeps bringing the the skilled and the unskilled closer and closer together until like some random stuff happens and, and you lose. So I don't know. I don't think there's like, I understand the negative feelings about losing that game to that team. But like, I don't think yeah. in general, this is like a, a wallow, a wallowing type result for me. But I do think the, continued inability to capitalize on red zone opportunities and struggles in short yardage, which have been consistent issues for the offense continue mm -hmm. to be troublesome and should have everyone's attention going forward. Real quick too. Cause like most of what I want to talk about is obviously like performance of players in the game itself, but just like the environment, how sweet it was to watch that on TV, like just an awesome viewing experience as somebody that appreciates that. And this is what they want to take away from us, Alan. Right. What ha well, what I said the during the game last night, you know, like, <laughs> why do I feel like as the snow globe is happening, like, why do I feel like the result of this game is a referendum on whether this is a good idea oh, or yeah. a bad idea for Cleveland? Mm -hmm. like, I got, I don't know what, like, that's a, in terms of just like the environment at the game during the game, that might be the best one I've ever covered. Like that was so much fun. Um, yeah. I can't like, I love that. I don't, I don't know who doesn't love that. Um, and I, I thought the players, again, it's not like the game degenerated into some like unwatchable muck. Be, like I thought the players did a really good job of continuing to execute in the snow. Like it was, it was still good football. In fact, I thought yeah. like Russell Wilson got better in the snow. I thought, he, I thought it was better in the second half than he was in the first half. Or yeah, yeah, I felt that way absolutely. Um, at least live. I know you've watched it back a little bit, but like it's just like you go through some of these numbers and you'd be like, I, I know it was like a historical win in some cases, um, for the Browns in this one to be able to win this game. Three turnovers. So the Steelers win the turnover battle, and they hold Nick Chubb 21 total touches for 60 total yards in this game. Like you tell me that on the surface, and how many times you just said out of a hundred times on third down or, or fourth down or the Steelers stop at the Browns. Give me a hundred times of that those results happening. Steelers getting three turnovers and holding Nick Chubb to 60 total yards. How many times are you picking the Steelers to win that football game? Like, like hundred out of a hundred. No. Bill yeah. Barnwell from uh ESPN. That's that's the post that I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh Browns uh, lose the turnover battle by two, failed to convert two third downs, didn't score a return touchdown and were outgained uh, NFL teams 0 and 67 in that scenario entering Thursday night. Um, you know, it's just like, I, you know, like 30% of the result of any given football game is like random luck. Like, and well, that's and I what think, I was going to say. And like, I think that's my question when you're talking you. about like Thursday night and bad weather, that might be 50%. Like, it just is. I, I guess that's my question to you then is like, how how did this end up being the result? And is it as simple as just because of the Steelers inability to get a yard or two in those short yardage situations, inability to cash in in the red zone? Um, they miss a field goal, which like, I mean, it's 58 yards in, in those conditions. So I'm not like holding that against Chris, but they miss a field goal, which hasn't happened all year. Like what is, if you can boil it down here, what is the reason the Steelers lost this football game? It's like eight plays. Like it's it's literally like eight the, the, like eight plays flipped this game, and um, and I think Cleveland had to go eight for eight on them to win, and they did. But the four four the the three four uh, sorry the four fourth downs, mm -hmm. um, the uh, the Justin Fields incompletion to George Pickens on third and four, oh my uh, the God. shank the shanked punt by Corliss yeah. Waitman. Like something else that hasn't Waitman happened all year. Hit, 30 yards, which is a bad mm -hmm. punt. Mm -hmm. Probably a completely different game. Like, 
They needed a 15, I think the worst punt for a Steelers punter in like seven years or something like that. Like that's that's what Cleveland needed uh, there. Um, and uh, yeah, so like the, it's just it's just very very uh, random. The two point conversion hmm. still still scoring the two point conversion. It's a different game. Yeah, which by the way, that play like Cordero Patterson being the target. On a yeah. two point conversion play, I see that to me is where, again, like, can I go through and nitpick things, you know, schematically with art week in, week out? Sure. But like, that's why the larger issues to me have been about like personnel. Somebody else uh, put up a clip. It's like a third and 13 or something like that. George isn't on the field. Mike Williams isn't on the field. Heck, Calvin Austin wasn't even on the field. Like, wh- what do we, what do we do? Like, it was Van Jefferson and all the tight ends and Ben Strong. Yeah. Like that was the same formation they started the game with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like that so that's the stuff where I'm taking where I'm taking issue with more than just like, you know, the the offense as a whole. It's more the personnel. Yeah, I didn't think this was Mike Tomlin's best game either. Um oh, oh, yeah. in, in terms of like clock management and and things like that. He lost like I, I, I you have to let Nick Chubb score on the first run. Mm-hmm. First like I Cleveland was unfathomably stupid to run the ball while the Steelers still had two timeouts. Like if you're Cleveland in that situation, you run the ball and kneel. Like if, if they look like they're going to let you score. Mm-hmm. Make and it looked like he was willing to score. Like he wasn't sliding yeah. down. At yeah, the no, one no, no. Yeah. yeah. Like the, ste- like the, the, the instructions from the Browns should have been, do not get near the end zone. Kneel down if you get near the end zone. On first down, mm-hmm. make the Steelers call timeout. Then do it again on second down, make the Steelers call timeout. And then, like, so they, they get – and then the Steelers don't call timeout after they – you know, like, so just, they, they did the same thing at the end of the half. Um, with, with, And they lost 45 seconds there. They lost 45 seconds uh, by not calling a timeout on defense. Um, and so I think that was great. I, I, you know, I wrote about the, and we can talk about the, the, the third down play and the penalty against Seamus Winston, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, maybe you want to give some blame to the officials for not explaining clearly what was happening, but the Steelers controlled the process as to what the down and distance was going to be. And then the Browns were more prepared for it than the Steelers were. And the Steelers had to waste the time out that ended up changing the game. Uh, and so, like, I think there's a lot of things you can point to. I mean, I went in depth about the uh, the nonsensical nature of Justin Fields' uh, usage in this game. And, like, yeah. I mean, I, I'm willing to put a lot of things on Arthur Smith, but, like, I don't know. I, I think that's – I think there's some Mike Tomlin in that decision as well. And I just okay. – I, I don't I, – I didn't like it, any of the way they used Justin Fields in this game. I mean, right off the bat, the first – was it the first touch or second touch that he has that was like the rushed fourth down call? That was the second. Uh, wh- okay, so like really late getting the play in. Like it doesn't even snap it. There's like two seconds left on the play clock when he snaps the ball and just seemed very – like everything was disoriented on the yeah. play. Obviously don't get it. Um, just the, it's in the first half, but, just call timeout. Yeah, right. Um, or take the delay not- game penalty and go punt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in terms of just, I feel like I'm all over the map here right now, just because uh, like I'm thinking back to Justin Fields' plays. But then, okay, so like the third down one that he threw, uh, mm. the vibes for me were off for most of this game. Dante Jackson gets the pick right beforehand, and I didn't necessarily believe that we were just going to be able to run out the clock the way that this game was going or anything like that. I figured that Cleveland would get the ball back, but I didn't understand why we were having Justin throw a deep ball to George on third down and four, just with everything else. Like it it really didn't line up to me with everything else they had done. Uh, I think that Justin has to be able to throw the ball when he's on the field. Otherwise it's going to become very obvious as time goes on here, what he's going on the field to do. But like in that situation specifically, that, that was odd to me as well, that that was the play call. Uh, On, on several levels. Uh, I didn't think George had been like, if you look at George's game, like when the snow started falling, George wasn't adjusting to it as well as the Steelers, other receivers were 
You know, like he 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 he, yeah. he missed. You know, he couldn't couldn't get back to the one. I mean, Russ missed him badly in the end zone, but like he couldn't get back to it. But then a couple of plays later, Calvin Austin makes a like a beautiful like leaping grab. Like it didn't seem like George was was whatever was tracking the ball or or whatever. Like it just seemed like some of the other guys were having a, an easier time dealing with the weather than he was. Uh, Any time you're dealing with weather, the more air yards you put under the ball, like the like the more you're you're putting to chance, right? Like you only needed four yards, like mm-hmm. you threw it twenty eight or whatever. Like I, that wasn't that long, but uh, I, I just think it was a strange play call. I, I like the idea. Um, I just I don't know the timing of that feels weird. And then if you're gonna like if you're gonna throw it. Like I, I don't know. I, I'm with you. Justin Fields needs to be able to throw the ball. I, I just, I don't know. None of that made any sense to me. Yeah, I was wondering, like, if that, if if that's what you're dialing up, you're like, we want this play, George, go ball right here. This is the situation for it. Why isn't it Russ on the field? Well, I guess maybe the thought is that like Cleveland is so sure that Russ is going to run it that just like everyone abandons their responsibilities and it turns into a touchdown. Like, like maybe like that's the, like you, like I guess that's the thought process, right? Where you're just like, Hey, we've done nothing but run it with Justin all game. It's third and four. They know we're not going to want to throw it because we won't want an incomplete pass. Want the clock to keep running. Uh, you know, uh, you know, the, so we put Justin in there and maybe have him take one step forward. That cornerback's going to bite and he can just throw an uncontested touchdown. Like that's the thought process, but I just, man, that's a, that's a low percentage play given the situation. I want you to talk, obviously, we, we had, a, right before we started recording, we are talking about how you watched some of this game back, and you said, you know, you felt like Russ was definitely better in the second half, but how poor that he played going back and watching as opposed to how you felt he looked live. But I guess the other part of that, to me, then, is if you were going to do that with how good, uh, or at least certainly improved in this game, Russ was in the second half. I trust him to, okay, if that's not, if that look isn't there on third down, maybe he goes somewhere else with the ball. Like I, It I don't was know, there, though. Open. I mean, it was open. Like, that, you know. It just it was George didn't make a very good play on the ball. I, you know, he said he was interfered with or whatever. I actually have not gotten like a very close look at the end of that play to tell you whether he was right or not. But he's that came the up one with, with Emerson. Um, it- I don't remember. He okay. came up looking for a call. I remember that. Yeah, like, pretty demonstratively. Uh, he kind of got turned around. Um, okay, I think it was. Yeah. All right. I was like mixing plays together. That's why I wanted to make sure, but I'm pretty sure that that was the one with Emerson. Then if that's the case that he was looking for. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess that's true too. I can, I can see both sides of the coin there, but it just goes back to me. Like if I, that's why I would use fields differently up until that point. Right. Because then maybe it's a different look. Like you're, you're not setting yourself up to, for that to be the one time that you do decide to pass out of it like they hadn't done it yet why not do that earlier in the game if you want to see show them that type of look that justin will throw out of that i don't know yeah yeah i i just i don't know it was strange and 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 cleveland was not fooled by it at all like i just did not feel like cleveland was fooled by much of what they tried to do with justin out Mm -hmm. there or or otherwise um you mentioned going back and watching a little bit and feeling like uh russell wilson was not as good in this one uh on the rewatch as opposed to how you felt live um what did you see that made you feel that way i know you put something out on on twitter about feeling like receivers were just running wide open at times throughout this one yeah i mean i think you know maybe some credit to cleveland for playing the situation but like there were they were just super aggressive playing the run and there were like they did a nice job of not playing the defense i thought they were going to play I thought they were going to play cover one. That's what they mostly played. I thought it was going to be just like Washington game. Jim where like, yeah. you, you saw a lot of like the, you know, the single high safety shaded to George. The other guy's going to be open deep. Like there's going to be those deep shots everywhere. I thought they did a good job of like varying the pre-snap look, but then just being like hyper aggressive after this, you know, at, as the, at the snap. And so, like, they were crashing downhill on the run hard every play. They were taking away the underneath stuff and just saying, like, they're not going to throw it 30 times in this kind of coverage looks to beat us. I thought they did a nice job, but, they, like, there were guys open 
all the time. And then the other thing is that the cover, like the the pass rush was getting there quickly. And so I, I thought this was the first time. This has been a long time problem for Russell Wilson throughout his career, is that he has a tendency to get his eyes down at at the line of scrimmage instead of keeping them downfield. And I felt mm. like that happened in this game where, yeah, there were times when the rush did get there. There were other times where the rush didn't get there and Russ was looking at the rush instead. And there were other times where I just felt like he was hesitant to throw the ball for whatever reason, uh, where there were guys that were open and he was even on like the last drive, like they're, they're, they're trying to go down the field to, you know, to, to get to range for a Hail Mary and he's throwing the ball away out on the sideline. I'm like, like, what are you like? Just throw it. Yeah. Like there's just like George is down there. Like I, I, I just felt like he was very cautious um, in a way that was not helpful um, in this game. And then there were at least three touchdowns. Oh, where, that one to Pat. Oh my goodness. I mean, yeah. Pat was uncovered. The um the deep ball to Calvin Austin, which he does complete. That's why, like, if you look at the stats, like it doesn't look bad, right? Well, on that play, he completes like a, the play to where Pat's open for like what would be an 80 yard touchdown. Like Darnell Washington gets like a five yard out or something instead. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, well, on the stat sheet, it looks like one of one for five yards. Good play, but it's like you turn down a free touchdown to complete that. The Calvin Austin was a 46 yarder. It's like eight yards under thrown. If it's out in front of Calvin, it's a 73 yard touchdown. Steelers end up settling for a field goal. Like that looks like a great play on the stat sheet, but it's really not. It's really like quite bad. You know, uh, the, the one to Pickens in the end zone. I mean, I understand it was in a blizzard. I'm not saying it's mm -hmm. easy throwing conditions, but that ball was nowhere near where it was supposed to be. And that's another thing where like Pickens is basically uncovered there. Like, like where the, the Cleveland corner is in a leverage that he cannot possibly maintain. That like there is a 100% chance that George Pickens is going to get open in the next three seconds just based on the way he's lined up, but the Steelers <laughs> couldn't complete it. And like I, I thought the Browns did that a lot where they were just like, you won't hold the ball long enough. You won't throw 30 deep balls a game to make us pay for being this aggressive. Like we, we just don't think you have it in you, and the Steelers didn't. Yeah. Um, so you got to give the Browns credit there. I think where you also have to give the Browns credit. What did they do in this game, Alan, to be able to keep TJ Watt off of the stat sheet in a way that the Steelers were not able to with Miles Garrett? Miles Garrett, three sacks in this one, obviously the strip sack of Russell Wilson that set them up in plus territory on a drive. TJ Watt had, you know, his moments certainly against the run, uh, but didn't pop off with, you know, any sacks in this one. I'm not even sure if he had how many pressures he had, if he had any. So uh, what did the Browns do to be able to negate his impact? I put two guys on him. I mean, they did it almost the entire game. Um, and, and I don't think the Steelers did a very good job of moving him around. Um, I, I didn't think they needed to do it a ton. But, like, a look, look at a lot of the Miles Garrett pressures. There's two guys on him. Like, uh, he's coming around the inside, though. Like, he, he's, he's twisting around. And so it's really hard to maintain a double team across – almost need the whiteboard for this. But, like, okay – so think about the offense. Okay, if you have the tackle and the tight end next to each other, right, they're both going to block Miles Garrett, okay? And now instead of him coming straight at them, it's a twist. So now you're going to bring the defensive tackle across in front of his face, and Garrett's going to loop around to the inside of the formation. Now you have to, like, if it's 1-1, one, one, if you're single blocking, twists are sometimes hard to deal with. But now, like, you're going to – you're involving a if – the, if the interior two guys just trade – now it's impossible to double team Garrett, right? Because it's now it's one on one against the guard. Otherwise, then you have to try to get the tight end in to solo up the D tackle. Like you're taking away the double team when you twist like that. And the Browns did it all game long. There's a set the one sack right before the half. Garrett comes around on a on a big loop and he just blows by Zach Frazier like he's standing still and just crushes yeah. Russell Wilson coming straight up the middle. But he was lined up outside, and the Steelers were trying to double-team him, and instead it gets Garrett one-on-one -on -one against Frazier. I just felt like it was like T.J. Watt, 54 reps of rip move from the edge. Like, there was there was like almost zero variation in the way they used him. And so, and like, and that can be okay if everybody else makes plays. But... I'm like just going to ask you if the you felt like this, this was 
a sign for them to move them around more. Like, yeah, like the re- I, well, I mean, it, it can work, right? If you just say, yeah. "Hey, our one guy's taking two of yours all game long," now the rest of us are playing ten on nine, right? Like, okay, so somebody else should win, but nobody mm-hmm. else did with regularity. Nick Herbig comes through with the strip sack very late in the game, but until that point, and and you know, just that one time, they didn't. The the, uh, the rest of the Steelers didn't win ten on nine ag- enough to make the Browns pay for putting two guys on TJ Watt and the Steelers didn't move TJ Watt enough to get him away from two guys. Did that specific aspect of this game take you by surprise at all? I know we talked about the Browns offensive line and how they've performed this year. They have like notable name guards, obviously Jack Conklin, the tackle as well. Poaches is a decent player at center, but like Batonio and Teller have been the staples for them for a long time, but haven't necessarily played to that level this year. But Tony has been pretty solid, but um, did that surprise you in terms of them being able to limit the Steelers in that way? Yeah. I thought Nick Herbig would win more than he did. Um, and I thought Herbig got a little run down. Maybe, maybe the, the shortness of the week impacted. I think the shortness of the week impacted the younger guys more than it did the older guys. And I thought it was obvious in his case. And I didn't think Preston Smith was particularly good. And like, I didn't think he gave them much of anything when he was in there in terms of pass rush juice. Uh, and then I just thought they let Jameis Winston get out of the pocket too often. There's one play where like Larry Ogunjobi has him kind of dead to rights and he it gives up the angle coming to the near sideline and, and Winston's able to get on the move and complete a pass. Like they didn't do that at all against Lamar or Jaden Daniels, yeah, but, they, right, but yeah. they let Jameis get loose on them. Like that's just execu- like, again, that's just. Jameis I, had a rushing touchdown. Right, that's just execution. Well, there's really bad hold on Nick Herbig on that touchdown. There we go, yes. Um, like I, I just think like that's when I look at that, I'm like this, this defensive game plan that kept Russell, uh, they kept, uh, yeah, Russell Wilson kept Lamar Jackson and Jaden Daniels from being able to run that allowed Jameis Winston to run. Like it's not the scheme. Like that's it's just that the, like the guys didn't play that well. Mm-hmm. One of my takeaways in a positive way was I thought Patrick Queen was once again pretty solid in yeah. this one. What did you make of you know the rest of the performers on the back half of the Deshaun season? Elliott was a levels? dude. Deshaun Elliott yeah, was yeah, really Deshaun. good. Yeah. yeah. Um I, I thought Joey had an okay game, kept everything in front of him, but I thought there were a couple that were a little bit too easy. Um and I think uh not a matchup, you know. I think that's a matchup he should win a little bit easier. Um, but you know, I, I thought we we got into it about Minka in the in the in the in the post game. Mm-hmm. Everyone's mad about the lack of splash. I'm like, you can't make him throw it to him. <laughs> like you, I, I, you know, you get you say like you got to get a guy under more pressure to make him make that mistake. And it's not like Minka's. Not like he, like it would be one thing if there were plays where he was like one step away or close or like guys that are open that he should be covering, and it's just not the case. Like the teams are just avoiding him, and mm-hmm. uh, I think again, like just not enough plays elsewhere. That's been what's made this defense good throughout the season, which is again why it doesn't really bother me. I can just I am comfortable just chalking it up to weirdness on Thursday that like they shut down Jaden Daniels and Lamar Jackson, Jameis Winston runs on them. Like they've made plays all year and they just didn't make them in this game. And like, I'm just, I'm just going to say they just didn't make them. Like I, I don't, I don't have, I don't have an answer and I don't really have a concern either. Okay. So we're not obviously not going to pick, the game this far in advance, but I just want to ask you, like, just based off vibes, you said you had this one as a loss. What's your comfort level in feeling that this team can bounce back against Cincinnati in 10 days? Well, I think Cincinnati's a tougher matchup. Um, I think they're a better team, but I, you know, I think I, I mean, my expectations have been that they're probably going to split the division games mostly because of the way they're scheduled. And I'm still right there. Like, I don't, I don't think there's a, you know, I think Cincinnati's a good team. I think it'll be difficult for the Steelers to beat them twice, but, um, you know, they certainly can. I mean, Cincinnati. This is another one where, like, similarly to Baltimore, just, you know, a a week 
ago or this past week. Uh, I like on the on paper, like I want to say that this is going to be a higher scoring game, or it's going to happen. Like the Steelers have to score points in this one to win, and I do believe that. But like, how much of it gets thrown out in terms of? Because I feel like with Baltimore, it was kind of just like throw that out the window because it's Baltimore throw whatever out because it's a short week against Cleveland and Cleveland. Is there something that should tell us to throw everything that we know about this one versus Cincy out? No, I don't think so. I, I think okay. we sh- I think this should play out the way it looks like it should. Steelers will be coming off with, uh, with some more rest, right? The Bengals are – no, the Bengals yeah. are off, right? The mm-hmm. Bengals off this week? So, <clears throat> I believe so. So both teams kind of coming into it pretty fresh. You know, I – I don't yeah, have sorry. Any, uh, I thought you just meant more rest than normal and not more yeah, than Cincinnati. Yeah, 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 yeah. Steelers, yeah. So, but the Bengals actually will have a rest day's advantage mm-hmm. if you're someone who pays attention to that. But, um, yeah, I, I think, look, I, I think that's a game where the Steelers are gonna have to score. And I think they have to figure this stuff out with how they're gonna use Justin Fields as a positive. They need to, and how they can be more efficient in the red zone. They need to. Yeah. How they can be better on short yardage, they need to. Uh, there are other things I'm, that happen in this game. I don't think I don't think Najee Harris is going to rush for two point six yards per carry very often. Like that's not yeah. the that's not the rushing, especially in that environment. Like that's I was expecting right. him to that's, be the dude. That's not what we've seen. So I'm yeah. not going to expect to start to see it. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. Uh, I'll, well, I was almost said until tomorrow, but until Monday, tell the people they can find you. At A Saunders underscore PGH on X Instagram, TikTok, and Blue Sky. PGH Steelers Now is the site's account, SteelersNow.com. Go there and read the word so I can get paid. And like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications here on the YouTube channel. Another episode of Steelers Spotlight with Aaron Becker coming up on Saturday. We just did two this week because it was yeah. a Thursday game and it was weird. So he's got another one with uh, another former member of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I will just tease it that way. Yeah, there you go. You have to watch it to find out. I mean, you'll know by the title, but I think, but like still just watch it. Shout out to Aaron for that, for good stuff. Yeah. He texted me today and was like, Hey, can you send me that code? And I had no clue what he was talking about, but yeah, he needed the stream yard code. So, uh, shout out to Aaron. Um, yeah. Like subscribe hit the notification bell, hit us in the comments with your thoughts on anything that we talked about. I'm sure. You guys got a lot of thoughts about this game. We want them, uh, leave us a five-star view and subscribe. If you're listening somewhere else, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast from, you'll find us there. Just search Steelers afternoon drive, do the same thing on TikTok and follow us over there. And then follow me everywhere. Zachary Smith, PGH for Alan Saunders and myself. Thanks for jumping in. Take another ride on the Steelers afternoon drive. <laughs>